Hey, I thought I'd record a short video on passing structures to C++ functions. So we're going to go through this in three ways. I'm going to pass these structures by value, by pointer, and by reference. And I may as well put that up on a screen for you guys. By value, by pointer, and by reference. So the difference between these types is that when you're passing something by value, you're passing the entire object, or rather, a copy of the entire object. Any changes you make to that object inside the function will not persist back to the original object. You're just manipulating it inside that function, and when the, when the function finishes, that object is thrown away unless you save it somewhere else. With a pointer and reference, however, and those are pretty similar, but the way you implement them is different, you're referencing the original object and that means any changes you make inside the function will affect the original object that you give the function to work with. So with that all said and done, we can open our file. So the first thing I need you to do is to open up a new C++ source file called whatever you would like, but I've called mine structs.c++ and fill it with the content you see here in front of you. And I will, if you pause the video, I will sit here and wait while you do that. Great, welcome back. So now that you've got this all copied into a new C++ source file, we need to actually instantiate an instance of our struct, which is complex in this case. So we're going to go struct, the type of the struct, which is complex, as we defined up above. And we're going to call it thing, just for fun. And as you can see, my complex structure has two properties. One of them is a double R and one of them is double I. And those are just numbers, really. So let's give those both values. Thing.R equals 2. Thing.I is equal to 7. Great. So now that we've instantiated our thing and given it some values, we can start to write our functions. So up at the top here, I know that the three functions I want to write are going to be something like void display by value. So that's going to be our function for passing by value. And then one of them is going to be for by pointer, and the last one is going to be by reference. And the difference between these is going to be the parameter that the function takes. So let's call our pointer PC, and let's call our reference RC. But we're not quite done. We need to indicate that this is actually going to be a pointer to a an instance of complex, and this one is going to be a reference or the address of an instance of complex. And sorry, rather, this is a reference and this is going to be an address. It's going to be the address of a complex instance. I'm going to separate those just so it's clear. I doubt it will like me if I compile it like this. Oh, it's fine. So let's tackle the display by value first. Why am I doing that? I can just So displaying by value is actually quite easy. When you pass by value, you're going to be able to manipulate the object as if you were using it in its original function. So we can actually call c.r to get the r property of c. So let's go ahead and print c.r and a space and c.i and a line return at the end just so we can display everything we want. And maybe let's put some text here just so we know it's actually our display by value function printing this. The last thing we need to do is call our function.
and the parameter is thing, and we can pass it just like that with no extra special characters or pointers to it because we're passing it by value. Fantastic. I just formatted it so it would look a bit nicer there. So we're done. We've, this is a function that successfully accepts a pass by value structure. And when I'm running my C++ programs, I actually have a button bound to the uh, compilation. It, it compiles it and then it immediately runs it and it sends that output back to me. But if you don't have that, you can simply go G++ struct or whatever you've named your file, or sorry, not C++, G++, which is the uh, GNU C compiler for C++. And it looks like it's compiled successfully, so now I can run a dot out. And we can see right there our structure has been called successfully by reference, and it's printed value to 7. In the future, I will not back out of my console to do this. Instead, I will hit a button, and I will tell you I'm hitting it, and it will print something like this. And this is the same. It's still compiling it with G++ and running a.out, but you are not seeing me do that manually. Fantastic. Let's continue. Uh, let's do void. Actually, I'm just going to copy it like I did last time. So when we're displaying something by pointer, we actually need to use a different notation for accessing the properties of the object because, of course, we're given a pointer to the object. So we could either go like this. We could go the value of PC dot R. Or alternatively, C has this notation that's a lot easier to use. We can go PC arrow R. And these are functionally equivalent things, and they both give you the R property of the th this um, structure that you're pointing to, but this bottom one is a lot easier and simpler to read. Oh, and it's <laughs> it's condensed my function into one line there because it isn't very long, and I haven't put any semicolons because I don't need to. Uh, so we're actually going to copy this, and inside here we're going to go PC pointer to R. And in here, we're going to put PC pointer pointer arrow to I. And we're going to copy that print function as well. Pointer. Great. So if we run that, we should see. Oh, we haven't called it. Display by. But instead of sending thing, we actually need to go like this. We need to give it the address of that thing. Giving it the address of that thing is essentially the same as going complex. I think what you're supposed to do is something like complex pointer. And then you can go pointer equals the address of the thing. And then you could also pass pointer. So either of these methods will work. You can pass, you can directly pass the address of your thing, your complex structure, or you can pass a pointer to it that's been assigned previously up here. But in any case, both of those will give the correct value of that pointer. But here's where it gets interesting. And this is what I wanted to show you people earlier. So if we go and we change here, c dot r is now equal to uh, 23, and c dot i is now equal to 72, and we print these values again. Oh. I didn't add semicolons. Haha. -ha. 
is better. So you can see up here, um, it says value 272372. So I'm just proving that I've changed that object inside that function and I've printed 23 and 72 instead. And the changes did not persist. But if I go down here in the display by pointer function, and I'm going to go like this, actually, I'm going to remove the second display by pointer function. I'm going to remove this pointer assignment, just so things aren't as confusing. And I'm going to display by value, then display by pointer, then display by value. And if I go while I'm displaying by pointer, if I change it here, so I go PC pointer to R is equal to Yeah, let's make it uh, 235 and PC I can be 724, just so it's easy to tell where it came from. If I now run this, oh, ah, I'm really not doing well with the semicolons today. Been, too, been doing too much uh, JavaScript and Python. So now that that's fixed, here we can see the first call by value prints 27 and then 2372. And we can see in the first line of pointer, the original object still holds 2 and 7. But we change them in that function. And after that, when we call by value again, the original object has 235 and 724 as they were set in the display by pointer function. That's pretty interesting. So essentially, I've proven here that these modify the original object, and these modify a copy just for this function. And here, I'll print this again just so it's consistent. Great. Let's do one more, because the last function that we need to write is display by reference. So displaying by reference is actually much more similar to the display by value than the display by pointer. You can actually call, you can use the object as if you're doing a display by value, but it is actually referencing the original object, and that's what's so interesting about it. So we can go, actually, we're just straight up going to modify. I'm going to take the contents of that first function we wrote, plop it in here, and we're going to change the string to reference. This is going to be rc.r, rc.i, just going to add ours everywhere here. But we're going to change the numbers to make sure that so how about 2, 3, 5, 9, and 7, 2, 4, 9, and finally we don't actually need to do anything special when we pass something to this function. We can just pass it the reference to the object like we did with display by value, and it will automatically give you the reference to that object instead of, actually, it won't because we haven't changed. Yes, we did, Never mind. It will automatically pass the reference of that object to the function rather than the object itself because of how we've defined it in our function definition up here. So if I run this one last time, I'm going to format it first. If I run it one last time, we can see call by value. The original function has 27 in it, and we change it to 2372, and then it prints 2372, and that doesn't affect the original object. Then calling it by pointer, we see the original object still has 27, and we change it to 235724. Finally, we call it by reference, and we see that the pointer 
did actually change the original object, which now has 235,724. And we then change the object to 2359,7249. And that is how you call a structure in three different ways. I hope you've enjoyed this short video. I plan to do a lot more of these um, very off-the-cuff, one-take programming videos. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed and have a nice day. Goodbye.